I'm I'm Aditi. I'm from Dr. Liran Shlush Lab, and today I'm going to talk about my project titled "Detection, Characterization, and Prevention of Emerging Mediated Detections." So, so the double strand breaks usually are repaired by one of the three methods. The first one being NHEJ, where after the double strand break, there's either a deletion or insertion of a few bases at the junctions. The second is the MEJ method, where after the double strand break in between the two homologies, there's only retention of one homology and the other homology and the intervening sequence is lost. Thirdly, the homologous recombination, where after the double strand break, you get the exact copy which was originally present as before. So among the, among the error prone pathways, we do see that microhomology and joint repair is highly predictable because irrespective of where the double strand break occurs in between the two homologies, you get the exact same deletion of the exact same size. Recently, a, uh, an article published from our lab showed that the most common deletions in myeloid malignancies, such as KLR, SRC2, and A6 and one occur by MMEG. So since the MMEG deletions are so common and highly predictable, we thought of developing a novel algorithm to find both somatic and germline MMG deletions. Secondly, we are also interested to decipher the mechanism of MMG deletion formation. And thirdly, we wanted to devise a strategy to prevent such type of deletions. Now, our approach to, uh, to find novel somatic and germline deletions was as follows. We decided to locate all the possible homologs across the exome and in order to do so, we looked at the reference genome 100 bases at a time and developed a matrix of size 100 by 100. Now, whenever there is a match along the diagonal of this matrix, we have found a homolog. Thus, by repeating this process across the exome 100 bases at a time with a sliding window of 20 bases, we developed the first map of homolog. Now that we have a list of all the possible homologs across the exome, we have a list of all the possible MMG deletions that can be created from this list. Now what we do is we search for this list one by one in the patient samples. And if a patient sample has this sequence present in, in the reads, it means that the patient has that deletion. Now it is quite possible that we are not looking at all the, post, all, all the MMG deletions out there. And in order to find other patterns of MMG deletions, we decided to do a CRISPR screen in the SX01 MMG deletion. We did a double strand break in between the SX01 homolog, and then we made a list of all the possible deletions that can occur in this small region. And what we found out was not only do we get a perfect match type of MMG deletion where we retain one homolog from the two homologs, but we also get the imperfect match type of MMG deletion. So broadly speaking, there are two types of MMG deletions. The first one being the perfect match where you retain one homolog, and the second one being the imperfect match where there's one extra base missing from the left or right side of the homolog. Now, we also wanted to check if this type of imperfect match deletions have been reported elsewhere before. So we looked at the COSMIC database, which is a database that reports all the somatic mutations in cancer. And what we saw was that not only there are perfect match type of MG deletions, but also the imperfect match type of deletions, although they occur at a much lower frequency. Now to test the performance of our algorithm, we decided to look at the positive control, the known MG deletions, which are SXL1 and SLZ2. Now the deletion frequency of these deletions has already been reported in the Y zone database, which is a database of of uh, AML samples. So we reanalyzed the AML samples using our tool. And what we found out was not only do we find all the delish, all the patients that were reported in the Wisom database, but we also find patients in which this deletion was not reported before. And then next, when we looked at the mutant reads reported by both these tools, we see that our algorithm reports higher mutant reads than the Wisom, than that found in the Wisom database. And we think that probably because our tool is more sensitive, it's very specific, we are able to find this deletion in more patient samples. 
Next, we also artificially created about 600 MMEJ deletions and we tested the performance of other variant callers and our tool to see if we are able to detect these deletions. We saw that our tool, Delrid, had the highest AUC score. So given that our algorithm works good, we decided to use this algorithm to find novel somatic and germline MMEJ deletions. We also wanted to validate our we also wanted to do another set of validation in another cohort, which is the TCGA BRCA. And then finally, we wanted to choose a few deletions to validate it by sequencing. What, what we found from VTML was that we didn't find any novel somatic deletions. Although we were able to find some novel germline deletions, out of which we chose a few ones for sequencing and we were able to validate all of them by sequencing, by targeted sequencing. We also tested the performance of other variant callers in finding these novel deletions, and we saw that not many of them were not found by these variant callers. So here's a representation of the germline deletions that we found. One thing to note is that the MG deletions that we find for the the, the, the non MG deletions that we find in patients have the same frequency that has been reported previously in the PopMax database. And also we find some novel MMG deletions. These MMG deletions were enriched for non frame shift type of functional annotation, which is what we would expect for germline deletions. We also analyzed another cancer cohort, which is the TCGA BRCA, and we found novel somatic deletions in there, which were enriched for, more enriched for frame shift deletions, as we would expect for somatic deletions. Finally, we also want, we also found some novel germline deletions in the TCGA BRCA that were enriched in frame shift type of functional annotations. Next, we asked ourselves, how do these MMG deletions occur? And for this, a hint came from the known MMG deletion, which is the KLR. Now, just next to the KLR homolog, we saw a repeat of about 18 bases, tandemly repeating about 4.5 times. So we asked ourselves whether MMG deletions are enriched for many satellites. What we found out was both the perfect match and the imperfect match deletions were enriched for many satellites as compared to random deletions. We next asked whether, whether these many satellites occur to the left or right of the MMG deletions. But what we saw was the there was no such bias and the many satellites here shown in black occur, they span over the Whole of the MMG deletion. Then we wanted to look at the sequence enrichment of mini satellites and we saw that they are GC rich. Now, since the mini satellites are GC rich, we wonder whether this G rich region could also form another second structure known as the G quadruplex. The G quadruplex is, uh, is usually formed when DNA is single stranded and, this, and it's an unusual pairing where GG bonds are paired together. And one of the times when, DNA, uh, when the DNA is single stranded is during replication. So we thought that maybe during replication, the single strand of DNA forms a G quadruplex, which could, which hinders the po DNA polymerase while replication and re results in a double strand break. And this double strand break then could be repaired by MMEJ. Next, we checked whether our MMEJ deletions are enriched for G quadruplexes, and we saw that both the perfect and the imperfect match deletions were enriched for G quadruplexes as compared to random deletions. Then we wanted to see if, again, there's a bias in the G quadruplex, whether they occur to the left or right of the MMG deletions, and we saw that there was no such bias. All in all, we conclude that MMG deletions are enriched for both mini satellites and G quadruplexes. Finally, we wanted to we wanted to ask ourselves whether we could prevent MMG deletions. One thing we note that the, there's a huge influence of homolog on MMG repair. So we wondered whether if, uh, if we edit the homolog and then do a double strand break in between the two homologs, would there be an effect on the, on the MMG repair? Now, in order to do so, in order to perform this experiment, we used many CRISPR edits, where we did uh, CRISPR edits along the length of the homolog, and then we did a double strand break, 
in between the two homologs. This was performed for the ASXL1 gene. So in this slide, what we see is each panel is a different CRISPR edit. And on the y-axis are the different, um, different mutations. And on the x-axis is the WAF of, this, WAF of those mutations. We see that certain edits lead to reduction in the prevalence of MUJ deletions. So our algorithm is able to detect novel MUJ deletions. And we also see that our MUJ deletions are enriched for many satellites and G-core duplexes. And finally, mismatches in the homolog could potentially reduce the prevalence of the MUJ deletion. I would like to thank all my lab members for supporting me throughout the project and and also for the audience for listening to my talk. Thank you. Maybe I can start. So the input to your uh, tool goes through the whole exome sequencing or whole genome sequencing really? So, so we focused only on whole exome, but uh, this could potentially be uh, expanded to whole genome as well. And how does it handle sequencing errors and problems, like, you know, in terms of uh, so discovery rates and things like that. How, how do you account for that? It's not there's no uncertainty in your model. So we didn't look for uh, sequencing errors in in our in our current uh, tool. What we have is we this sequence of MG lesion is very specific, and we search for a very small sequence, and that's why we don't want to uh, incorporate error rates in here because then it could potentially such a region could potentially be present elsewhere in the genome, and we don't want uh, that kind of false positive to come, come into our tool. I have one more question. So you looked at a whole bunch of TCGA cancer. No, just TCGA BRCA and the beta ML. Was so we chose BRCA because BRCA, in BRCA, when the BRCA mutation happens, which happens in the breast cancer, uh, MMG deletions happen more than than the other than the other types of MMG, than the other types of repair. This is because uh, BRCA mutations suppress the homologous recombination and the NHEJ, and that's why there's an increased prevalence of MMG, and that's why we chose the TCJ BRCA. Yeah, we were really interested to look at other cancers, but uh, this tool takes currently in its form it takes some computational resources and we thought that if we make it more efficient then we can expand it to other cancers as well. Yeah.